And it's a happy new year on War Chant TV, maybe a happy Knoll year. Alongside Michael Langston, the senior recruiting analyst for WarChant.com. He also dabbles very heavily in the portal as well. My name is Tom Lang, and there you see it on the bottom of the screen. Michael, the number two overall transfer in On3's 2023 transfer portal rankings is defensive back Ventral Cypress, a.k.a. Deuce Cypress. Yep. And he is leaving Virginia, and he's coming to Florida State. That is monumental news, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's like, do we do we ever get bad news here? I mean, do we ever, is there ever bad news in FSU football? It sure doesn't feel like it. Um, yeah, this is one we've been waiting on. Obviously, uh, you know, we, we felt like uh, early this week uh, something could pop. I even felt like last week, you know, something could pop with Deuce because of, you know, just I really felt like when I, when I interviewed him, it, that sounded like a guy that, like, it's going to be hard for somebody to – top what what happened on this official visit the way he talked about it five or six times like i i can see myself here you know so the culture obviously really caught his attention um it's a major need for fsu because they really wanted to add a premier uh defensive back from the transfer portal i think deuce is a guy that could play the corner or safety i think more so cornal but uh I, i'll be honest when i was in orlando obviously i was at that game uh thursday night and only thing I could think about is like watching Jamie Robbins. I'm like, man, this cannot hurt du a chance for Deuce uh, Cypress because he is he is put on the show. But uh, I think uh, I think overall FSU did everything that they needed to accomplish on that visit, and it is a massive, massive pickup. Probably the biggest pickup out of all the guys they've gotten, and they're really good ones. I mean, there's like three or four. I think they're in the top ten for on three, but. Um, this one, I think, really dramatically changes your your team because of what it does for your back end. So, Michael, everybody's got different, uh, you know, priorities in, in matters like this when it comes to the transfer portal. And uh, they have different goals. Some guys are more NIL based. Some guys want just an opportunity to play football. And then there are others that are going to be sought after by many programs. Again, if I pull that uh, graphic back up on the screen, you can see that on three's expectation, at least people who entered the RPMs. <laughs> At Ohio State. So this is somebody that a lot of big name programs were looking yeah. for to help them be put over the top next year. What were the circumstances around Deuce Cypress uh, recruitment and his uh, transfer portal recruitment and what were his priorities that Florida State needed to check off? I think the big thing was he wanted to be a part of, first of all, a program that is either rising or there or a top program. Well, I felt like, hey, you know what? Um, this team's going to be a winner. This team's going to be a playoff contender. I think uh, we certainly would have said that for FSU before the season started, but you know, yeah. certainly with their season, I think that's dramatically certainly helped FSU. And then two, just what FSU does with the portal uh, and seeing seeing kids of of a product of like you know mentioned them, Jamie Robinson from South Carolina, you know, a, an All American type of, of of career already at FSU with only two years. Uh, played two years, but uh, I think those factors played in. And I think, too, just I, I think it sounds cliche, but, man, when he was around the team, he's like that you want to be comfortable around your surroundings and and also how you're going to be developed under under Marcus Woodson, even uh, Coach Norvell. So I think development, um, comfort, and then also where the program's going. NIL is always a part of it. I mean, I'm certainly wanted a, you know, coveted deal and I have heard that it was, um, but um, I think that can't be your main attraction or FSU will just walk out the door uh, as far as what I've heard, you know? So uh, there has to be a combination of everything uh, when it comes to the FSU NIL, but which we'll say that's outside of the program. It's not connected with FSU. It's a collective. So, but for FSU, the kid and the character, and this kid seemed to fit the kind of character and culture that Norville wants in this locker room. I mean, I, like, I think I go back to Hakeem Williams. A lot of people see about his talent, but it's like what the guy's going to bring to your locker room, not just his skill, but what guys fit for what you're doing. And I think throughout that whole weekend, when I, you know, people I talked to, I think Deuce fit fit everything they were kind of looking for. Brandon Fiske fit that. Daryl Jackson fit that. All these guys have a same characteristic of there's something they're looking for from each guy that's goal driven, that they know they know what they're coming into. And I think Deuce fit that. All right, Michael. So you mentioned it. He's listed at six feet, 170 pounds. Uh 
He is a veteran. Uh, he's been around Power 5 football. He knows what the hell he's doing at this level. But you said that there could be some flexibility in terms of the position he plays. I've seen, obviously, he's got some skills at corner. Florida State needs help next year at defensive back across the board. Right. Did he prioritize a position? Did Florida State promise a position? Or is this just wherever he fits best is where he's going to play? I think prioritize is going to be cornerback. I'm just I'm just give, alluding to the fact that you can move him around because he's so multidimensional. If you watch his career at Virginia, you know he certainly comes up and, and tackles. He's certainly physical. I'd I'd see him all the way as a corner. I think they still want a safety in this class. I have one in mind, but I'm waiting for him to hit the portal to, before I actually address him. But I think this is mostly corner where they want him. So. I think cornerback's the place that I expect to see him the majority of the time, but um, they need to help in that back end because uh, that was the one place where, you know, I felt like they could use some some experienced guys to go along with the young stars like Azare Thomas and those guys. I think they need some guy, uh, a, a really dominating, you know, uh, a player as in Deuce that can really just take over games. And certainly you got the best. I mean, this is the number one, I think, uh, guy that they wanted uh from the start from the back end and uh I mean it's it's amazing when you look back how many first option guys that they've gotten every every guy so it's feeling now like it's not just they're one of the top tier options and transfer they might be the top ter- I mean you look at it I mean if they if they got three or four that's half the top 10 I mean so yeah. that that is saying a lot about what the product is their recruiting ability, the way they're pitching and selling their product, and then two, just uh, you know what they're doing uh, inside their program that these kids are are magnifying to this stuff so fast. Yeah, Florida State before this move, uh, Michael, for what it's worth in the on three rankings, their average incoming prospect was an eighty seven rating, eighty seven plus rating in on three. This is a ninety six overall rating for this prospect. Florida State far and away in the top ten and the top twenty, the highest rated recruiting class in terms of the transfer portal and the quality of player that they're bringing in. So before we sign off for this particular video and this good news, Michael, what is next for Florida State? They've checked off so many boxes. You mentioned the safety position. Is that it? Are there more things that they're looking for in the immediate future? Because this isn't the only transfer portal window as well. There's another one coming after spring ball. Yeah, I think there'll be another one. uh, For those that don't know, kind of still January 18th, I believe. And then um, after January 18th, it closes. And then you have another short uh, window of May 1st through the May 15th to give people the dates if you want to keep track of the stuff. But, yeah, they're not done. Um, I, I think there's going to be, I think, you know, depending on what verse does, um, I think you could have a defensive end that you add in this class. They might even decide to add a defensive end. It might be just the best available, and they take another one even if first comes back. So, um, you know, you have that. I do think they want a, a safety, as I said. I think that's very important. I, t- I definitely do think they're still looking for a tackle. There's some stuff going on with Casey Roddick, so he might not be coming. So you might have another addition on the guard position. So, um, And I've shared all that stuff with Casey Roddick. Basically took stuff off uh, his Twitter and stuff. And um, it's in- NIL-centric from what I hear. But um, – like, like I said, like I told people today, I'm not worried about offensive line. You know, the attraction of FSU, they're going to get a top tier guy, whether it's Casey sticking or somebody else. But I think there's probably like three or four out there. What kind of bat bleep world are we living in, Michael, where you could say <laughs> with a straight face, I'm not worried about Florida State with the offensive line. It's just an amazing turn of events in the last five years as Absolutely. Alex Atkins has come in. And that's where Florida State is right now. And that's why you're happy as you're watching this video on WarChan TV. Hit that like button underneath the video. Hit subscribe to our channel because we've got you covered for portal season, spring football, football reports, recruiting reports all year long. This is going to be one heck of an offseason for Florida State. We can't wait to document it for you here on WarChan TV. For Michael Langston, the senior recruiting analyst and portal analyst here on WarChan TV, my name is Tom Lang. We'll talk to you next time on WarChan TV. Hit that thumbs up on the way out.